We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to another edition of AV Rant. I'm Tom Andre, and I'm here with... Rob H. This is AV Rant. It's your home theater and AV questions answered. But today we are presenting an interview episode. It's uh, one, of, That's right. one of our favorite and recurring guests, uh, which is Gary Yakubian, the CEO and president of SVS. They have a brand new product launch, the 1000 Pro Series subwoofers. So naturally, it was time to talk to Gary again. That's right. And... Uh... Just let's get the pleasantries out of the way mm-hmm. here, or the, the 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 I guess the business that we have to do at the beginning of every podcast. But this is AV Rant. It's the podcast that answers your home theater and AV questions. To get your questions answered, all you have to do is ask. You ask by emailing us at question at avrant.com. You can go to AV Rant, the website, and uh, leave us a comment there. Facebook.com slash AV Rant podcast, YouTube.com slash AV Rant. Contact Rob directly, Rob at AV Rant.com. My Twitter is at first ref- his Twitter is at First Reflect. I'm Tom at avrent.com. My Twitter is at avrent underscore Tom. Now, we usually do Listeners of the Week and stuff like that. We're not going to do that right now because uh, this is a one-off podcast. But without further ado, let's uh, immediately get into our interview with Gary Yakubian. Today, we welcome once again Gary Yakubian from SVS, CEO and uh, master strategist over there, to uh, back to the podcast, longtime friend of the podcast, uh, one of if if uh, not the most recommended subwoofer company, I can't imagine who else would be on our podcast. So, I, uh, Gary, welcome back to the Let's podcast. Talk about them. We don't need to talk about them. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So, welcome back, Gary. I, I mean, we we got a limited amount of time with you, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna skip all the pleasantries that we normally do and the the small talk. Let's just get right into it. You've got a new line of subwoofers. You've updated the 1000 line, and I want to say when you guys posted, and I, I talked about this in the podcast this week, when you posted on Facebook that you were you had a big announcement coming. I I had half a line t- typed out underneath it saying, "Is the thousand 1000 series is getting a pro line right?" And I went, "Oh, I better not." type that <laughs> I thought better of it and backspaced but uh, I was very excited to see that you guys have done this well first of all thanks uh, 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 Tom for having uh, me back on your show and for the kind words about SVS uh, we have a I, I love our team we have a wonderful team and uh, this launch uh, is something I am beside myself with excitement but you're right it's pretty logical. I don't think it was. I didn't. I don't think we really needed to draw a diagram. Um, uh, but but even so, there there were lots of uh, wild guesses, including you know, is SBS going to make a tablet? And you know, we we. Uh, uh, I know. I know. I know. Well, why don't we hop right into the elephant in the room? We're not going to pull any punches. We're going to hop into it right away and say, okay, we've got a new SB1000 Pro. That's the sealed box 1000 Pro. It is uh, in the lineup of SVS, the least expensive sub that you're offering at $500. And that's the same price that the outgoing SB1000 had. But there's also a new ported model, the PB1000 Pro, and that has a price point of $600. Now that's $100 more than the outgoing PB1000. So basically, what led to the decision to have that little bit of a price increase just on the ported model? And uh, we're like, does that potentially open the door for a competitor for a $500 ported sub, you know? <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, if you want you know, to, uh, if you want to, you know, be strict about it, it's not $500 anymore. That's true. Um, but what I can say is the old, um, it's not old, it's, it's still here, but, but uh, going away, the old PB1000 was a 10-inch driver-based solution and single-ported, um, not to mention all the improvements we've made in the amplifier platform and the driver design itself. Um, so this was, uh, uh, we think it's a massive leap forward um, uh, and, and a real step forward in, in our value proposition. It's, it's hard to say which is the more exciting product <laughs> in terms of our launch, because at, at $500, it's actually $499.99 to be. Yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> to be pedantic but, about it, but man, go on. <laughs> you know, but at 
for the SB1000 Pro. Um, and remember, the SB1000 was in terms of units, not, not necessarily dollar sales, but in terms of units, our most popular product all over the world. I'm sure. Um, so a little trepidation in, in bringing something to replace it. But when you look at what uh, uh, we, we, we did do a refinement of the driver, um, as one would expect, um, primarily because the amplifier is such a beast. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, the old amplifier was 300 watts per channel and the new one is 325 watts. So you're probably going, well, what the heck? Mm -hmm. What difference? That's, on, that's not even 10%, and that's true. But the, uh, the, the amplifier platform that we use is the exact same one from the, our 16 Ultra Series all the way now on down to 1000 Pro. It's a digital front end, but with a fully analog MOSFET output stage. So it's capable of gobs and gobs of current, but the driver needs to be equal to the challenge in order for that to be uh, 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 turned into a reality in terms of the listening experience, and it has that. And then, of course, uh, because it's um, it's just a superior amplifier platform, it's extremely low distortion, and we're using the same 50 megahertz analog devices DSP that we use. You know, when we first put it in a $2,000 subwoofer, that was a shocker for a lot of people that that level of processing sophistication was available at any price, let alone you know $2,000 price range for what was we felt and I think generally was embraced to be a reference subwoofer experience. Um, now it's at $500, and it gives us so much uh, ability to um, precisely craft the subwoofer. Um, it, uh, it obviously because it's so sophisticated. Now we can we can use uh, our uh, Bluetooth bidirectional smartphone app and all the different granular adjustments that someone could make on our 16 Ultra Series or 4000 Series or 3000 Series now can be made on our 1000 Pro Series at the $500 price range. Um, the other thing is uh, that uh, it's so low distortion that there's just a, a lot of audible um, improvements that you side to side, uh, it, it'll knock you over. Uh, and then the last piece of it is because of the, the uh, well, not the last piece, but I'm running out of steam here. The, um, <laughs> the uh, uh, 50 megahertz analog devices DSP allows us to do some extremely granular uh, response um, crafting of the subwoofer. And for that reason, it's uh, what we call acoustically tuned room gain. You guys know that a sealed box subwoofer benefits from room gain. But the problem with room gain is you can't always predict mm -hmm. what uh, room gain is just basically uh, a subwoofer exceeding its measured performance in a <laughs> ground plane, basically when right. it's outside or something along those lines. Um, room gain means that it ex literally exceeds its measured performance in a room. It literally mm -hmm. loads to the room. But the problem with room gain is you don't always, you can't always predict what frequencies are going to be exaggerated. There are different and rooms. It, it, that's right. <laughs> But with this um, very sophisticated DSP, we're able to craft a response curve where the room gain essentially does not change the character of the of the subwoofer's um, response. It just increases the bass response. So this is a a, a, a 13 inch cube that is just <laughs> shockingly good in in terms of its in room response. Well, that's a fantastic summary of. Uh, and I mean, we we understand this. It's a holistic thing. You can't take one piece at a time. But we're gonna try to break down sure. sort of aspects of these subwoofers and, and take it a little bit one at a time, just to help people understand better uh, everything that went into this. So uh, maybe we'll start with the cabinet, Tom, if you want to uh, start. Sure. There. So you know, we. I mean, there's a couple of things about the cabinet that interest me in particular, and especially when we look at the ported box version. Uh, your old sub had the 10-inch the driver like on the one side and the port kind of on the other and had this sort of asymmetrical look. But you've gone now to a... Like a Cyclops. Yeah, I really <laughs> I really didn't like it, i got to be honest with you. <laughs> Put the grill it, on. It, it, the grill, the, the, it was one of the few subwoofers where I'm like, yeah, just stick... There's other subwoofers out there I have the same <laughs> opinions of, but that one in particular kind of bothered me. But the new driver is centered nicely with two ports that you can actually now use uh, port plugs to tune with. So, you know, how, how did that decision come about to, to, to switch it up that much? Well, I, first of all, I mean, can I gently just agree with you without you know, throwing <laughs> my own product under the bus? I mean, I think, uh, you know, I felt it's not, it wasn't pleasing to the eye, but that, you know, we don't make des design decisions based on that. Sure. I think, um, 
in discussion with the engineers, the 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 it, this subwoofer is capable of of uh, appreciably more output than the PB one thousand. And for that reason, with if we had gone with this single ported design, there would have been very audible port chuffing, port noise. Okay. Um, in doing it the way that we did it, um, there's uh, uh, it's acoustically tuned dual ports. Um, but more importantly, there's a lot more port space, and so for that reason, the uh, uh, you, you're not going to hear port noise, okay. uh, at, probably at any volume. Um, but you're right; it, it also gives us three tuning modes. Um, each one ha- can have different benefits depending on the person's um, goals, but also on the room and um, even the content that they're listening to. Um, you can use it with both ports open, um, which would uh, be the normal way you would use it. Um, but you could also um, plug one port with port plug and it would uh, be a, a little bit less loud, but would be go a little bit deeper um, for the person that is looking for that. Uh, or you could use it in sealed mode, which would obviously be something that would probably be more suitable for someone in a two channel scenario or listening to music in their home theater. So um, you would have the ability to have all three, and at the touch of a button on the app, you can switch between them. Mm. So very quickly on the sealed box, does that get a new box, or did we use the same box design as the outgoing SB1000 for the new 1000 Pro? I mean, there there wasn't really anything particular to fix. Uh, it's, <laughs> a sealed it's carefully box. <laughs> bra- it's carefully braced. It's the same size, um, so it's it's a, it's. There are some very slight differences, nothing worth dwelling on. And just right. on the last part on the cabinet, we noticed that the SB1000 Pro, uh, three finish options available right there. You've got black yep. ash vinyl, you've got piano black, which has a little bit of a price increase at $600 for the piano black and $600 for the gloss white. Uh, but the PB1000 Pro, as it showed up, was the single finish option, the uh, black uh, ash vinyl at $600. Are there plans to have other finishes for the PB1000? And in fact, for the entire lineup if someone wanted a different finish uh does svs offer like customization or is it what's available on the website that's what you've got we don't do customization because uh the way that we manufacture requires uh you know thousands of subwoofers to be made in one production run so it's not practical um and for the same reason PB1000 Pro, we're not offering it in the gloss finish because there's hasn't been much demand for it. Okay. Um, so uh, typically, uh, listen, I don't want to generalize, but what yeah. we've seen is the, the the more diminutive subwoofers that we have, and diminutive doesn't really fit with SVS, but <laughs> relative to the rest of us, yes, yes. the rest of Relatively our stuff, speaking. <laughs> um, those are the ones that typically get the call for uh, different finishes. Cool. That makes a ton of sense, especially when you consider overseas uh, buyers and what they're looking for. Uh, the smaller subwoofers definitely need to match with uh, a lot of decors that people are, you know, they're buying it small because they need, they want something small for their space and they usually, they want to match it to their speakers. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Also white, they love white. And yeah. Lot, and especially in Europe, they yeah. love white. And uh, we have a great, you know, European uh, uh, clientele. I mean, I, uh, Europe is massive amount of, uh, 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 of SBS supporters. Yeah. So let's hit those new drivers, Tom. <laughs> right. So you 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 did the way with the the 10-inch driver for the the PP1000. You used the 12-inch driver for both. Right. And you know, is that just uh you know, I mean obviously we you already talked about how that it gives you more output and it's just more drive, you know, cone material there. But is that just a you know, uh why offer two different drivers when we can just put the same driver in both or is there was there another de- reason behind that decision? Well, first of all, you know, and you should know this about all SVS subwoofers, the, um, the driver is always optimized for the application, meaning they're not the same. The mm-hmm. SB1000 uh, Pro uh, driver is optimized for sealed, and uh, the PB1000 Pro driver is optimized for ported. Um, but to your question, which is a great question, I mean, it's, in the, the, it's really the truth is the amplifier um, is so capable and so and it's so uh, able to to um, create gobs and gobs of current that even a modified version of the 10 inch driver would have been inadequate to deliver on the potential um, and so that's why we we did a modified version of our our uh, uh, 
12 inch driver. In both cases, we shored up the voice coil and other parts of the driver in order to be able to deliver on the potential of the amplifier. Hmm. And you're right. I forget which one of you said this, but a subwoofer is an ecosystem. Yeah. Me, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, every move you make in one area has consequences in the other areas. And we're trying to create a total experience here. We're trying to, we know, I mean, I don't think other than when we're doing our own listening testing, no one listens to a subwoofer alone. It needs to deliver on, a, it needs to deliver a convincing and immersive experience along with its friends, the other five, <laughs> seven, two, 11 speakers in the system. I mean, I don't know. I've run a lot of bass sweeps. That's That's been just my subwoofers alone. I was going to say, you were speaking to people who actually sit <laughs> around with the subwoofers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners are some of the, the, the people who actually sit down with a microphone and go, hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to play some sweeps out of my subwoofer for the next <laughs> three hours. <laughs> so. Well, we've only seen pictures of the new 12 inch drivers because we, we haven't like disassembled these in person and looked at them ourselves. But going by the pictures uh, like we spotted back when the 2000 Pro series came out that, you know, it looked like these were the first stamped basket designs that we've seen from SVS was in the 2000 Pro series. And I mean, we remarked at the time, we're like, yeah, it's a stamped basket, but that is like the most substantial stamped basket that we might ever see. And so just going by the images that we've looked at of the new 1000 Pro series, uh, 12 inch drivers, they appear to be stamped baskets. Again, uh, we're assuming that great success with the 2000 series, uh, uh, 2000 Pro series, that that was probably sort of trickled down to the 1000 Pro series, but maybe you can talk a bit about that design choice uh, and confirm for us, is that a stamp basket? Again, very substantial yeah, it, if it is. So it, so it is. Um, I, what, what I would say about this, I think people obsess over certain things. Um, <laughs> cone, cone material would be another one. Um, <laughs> right. Whether a, bit, a basket is cast. Um, the reality is a driver as well is an ecosystem. Meaning, and, and um, my... Uh, not that they listen to my instructions, but my, my, I guess, vision for our engineers is to make choices that deliver the absolute best sound experience in the price ranges we're in. Right. Um, and so um, it's, it would be fun to, to get um, Smith on, uh, uh, Smith Freeman, our, our uh, uh, director of product development, um, because he he ridicules people that obsess over stamp versus cast. It's something that it's became like, a, to a it's an autophile like shorthand is what it is. Right. You know, they they just they're just like oh if I if if it's if it's stamp I can just immediately use that as a way of knocking the speaker without ever having heard it before, which of course is ridiculous. And by the way, it's a speaker business talking point that now has turned into sort of a belief that listen. Um, the, the reality is we wanted to create the absolute closest to a reference subwoofer experience anywhere near our price. And I hope you guys do have some time to spend with our product because I couldn't be more excited about this. Yeah. this, this bringing something like this that's capable of, of a really convincing, immersive experience to a person that is in uh, – and, and listen, $500 is not – you know, the average subwoofer right. price range is 150 bucks. So $500 is, it's, it's certainly not chump change. Um, right. But it's for us, it's our, it's our lowest price subwoofer. And we wanted to bring a true reference SVS experience to it. And I think we came pretty darn close. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, I mean, it, you've definitely already basically answered it, but, look, but it's just the devil's advocate question of like, I get it. You know, 12 inch drivers, there, there's lots of them in the world. It's not as though this is the first sure. 12, I mean, including your own 12 inch drivers. So it's that sort of right. approach of why, why take the time? Why take the resources uh, to develop an all new one? You know, why not just pull one off the shelf or even go back to one of your own designs and be like, hey, here's a 12 inch driver. We can make this work. Or, you know, <laughs> you've, you've said multiple times in our previous interviews, it's like, you're not going to do something unless you feel you can bring something new to it. So, you know, why the all new 12 inch driver in the, in the 1000 Pro series? Well, I mean, if there were an off the shelf solution that were as, as, as good as anything we could develop, then that would be the right thing to bring yeah. to our customers. But that would also make me beg the question of whether SVS is even needed anymore. But fortunately, <laughs> there's nothing off the shelf anywhere near this price range that, that, that we could have used. And, um, uh, and again, I hate to invoke Smith again, but he is so obsessive about driver performance, meaning we'll, 
We could have launched, by the way, you know, you asked uh, uh, you, in your pre sort of saying, hey, we might ask you about COVID and what it did. You know, we could have had this product in September um, if Smith wasn't so obsessive about granular details. And I support him in that. But he'll literally say, you know, this driver still has some instability at 28 hertz or 31 hertz or what. I'm like, is anybody, he's been, you know, he's been around. <laughs> I'm like, is, do you think any other speaker companies are, are sitting around obsessing over something like that? And he's like, no way. And, but I do think it distinguishes us. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, so, so we got it right. And uh, we launched after the holidays. It's, mm -hmm. it's the SVS tradition. As soon as, the, <laughs> as soon as the selling season is over, here we come with new products. <laughs> I'm sorry. We are the FOMO uh, you know, <laughs> a company, the company that, that launches something right after you bought something. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, yeah. the... Uh, you know, bringing this amplifier technology, which, you know, there's the, the power aside, which, you know, that obviously a, a, a subwoofer amp needs to have a lot of power. But you've brought a lot of other technology down to this price point, which uh, some might say, and I, I might question myself, you know, are users who are spending $500 on, or $600 on a subwoofer, are they really the type of users that are going to need Bluetooth connectivity and, you know, bi-directional feedback? Are they the ones that are going to be doing... Uh, manual uh, EQ with your three bands of parametric EQ that you guys have included. You know, could you have cut that corner, maybe saved a little money, or did you feel like your customers were saying to you, "This is what we want," and uh, if you could give it to us for five hundred dollars, we'd really appreciate it. Every, uh, I, and this is going to sound like like you know a CEO talking, but it's real. Uh, every SVS customer is an SVS customer. It's not like, oh, you know, poor you, you only have this much money to spend. So <laughs> you don't get the full experience until you become a big person and you can afford. That's just not how we roll. I mean, the the 1000 series previous to the pro, we, we re, you know, I would get comments. It was my, that was my first, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, in June, it'll be 10 years with SVS. My first fresh, clean project was 1000 series. Um, and the designers that we were working with at the time, um, some of them are still with us. Uh, they were like, are you out of your mind? This is going to be so close to the performance of the existing uh, one that was out there, which was our NSD series um, at the time. Are you out of your mind? You're, you're going to you know, have at a lower price, this, the similar, very similar performance to this other one that's more expensive. You're just going to be cutting yourself off at the knees. And I'm like that, then you need to figure out how at that more offensive, uh, offensive, it could be offensive <laughs> for some people, at that more expensive price point, um, how to, how to deliver on um, that promise. That's your next challenge, buddy. And, and, um, so no, I, I do think SVS customers, if they're getting an SVS product, they deserve the full on SVS experience and 1000 pro delivers that. Yeah, I mean this. Uh, this brings it now to the whole lineup. We've got we've got the app control, uh, three bands of parametric EQ, and Bluetooth communication going throughout the entire subwoofer lineup. Now it started with the 16 Ultra, and we've seen that come down to each successive lower priced series one at a time. Uh, looking at the back of those amplifiers, if we, uh, started with the 3000 series and then the 2000 Pro, we had those uh, button controls on the back because uh, the 4000 series and the 16 Ultra have the front panel uh, control. So, I mean, we can't assume that there's any coincidence there. That, that's pretty obvious seeing the lineage from 3000 to 2000 Pro to 1000 Pro. Uh, but we did spot one difference on the back of the 1000 Pro amplifiers that we don't see on any other uh, in the entire lineup, which is some speaker wire inputs. Uh, so we mm -hmm. just wanted to ask, like, why... Uh, that must have been a design choice. It didn't happen by accident. So why did you feel it was important to still have the speaker wire inputs uh, specifically on the 1000 Pro series? Because we wanted to have a solution for someone who has older product that doesn't have preamp output or d just doesn't have a line level output. Um, I think most current product that you can get uh, has a line level output of some kind. Um, but there's older receivers. There's people that those, those things don't break. And, you know, much to the chagrin of the audio industry in some cases. Um, and so we wanted to have a solution for them. Um, it's not because... Uh, there's any benefit to a speaker level input. It's really for the person who has no other alternative. Well, they can still have an SVS subwoofer experience with 1000 Pro. We didn't do it in the other 
line up because, because I, frankly, I don't want to send the message that that's just as good as line level. There's a lot more mm. uh, 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 distortion inherent in a speaker level connection because you basically raise the signal to speaker level at the receiver and then bring it back down to line level at the subwoofer. Right. And there, there, there's some attendant distortion in that that is unnecessary if you have a line level connection. I'm not saying it's you know, a major thing, but it's just something we don't want to send the message that there's some benefit to that. Okay. So you've included this powerful DSP in this, uh, well, in a lot of, in all of your subs, but in, all particularly in, in, in this, in this line, and there's this kind of school of thought that, uh, you know, you know, DSPs have been, are, are everywhere. They're in our phones. They're in, they're in our, you know, all of our devices, you know, the, the little speakers that you know, spy on us for the government and everything. Uh, <laughs> That those DSPs, you know, they they try to overcome some of the inherent problems with the drivers they're paired with. Now, your phone, the sp the, the speakers in your phone are of course terrible, and uh, you know, so in order to make them a little bit better, they apply some DSP in order to or digital signal processing for those of you that don't like the 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 the, the acronyms. But uh, what are you guys doing with your DSP? You know, before we even talk about the parametric EQ and the, uh, the stuff that you can do manually, what are you guys doing with this DSP to to uh, to make your subwoofer sound even better than they would if you just hooked it up straight to an amp? So all of the processing that takes place in our subwoofer takes place in the digital domain. That's a really important point. And guess what? That's been true even before we put analog devices DSP. Even our 1000 series, our, our uh, lowest price subwoofer had a DSP chip in it and all the processing was done in the digital domain. There's a lot of benefits to that. Um, you know, the kinds of things people say about, you know, digital sound, I don't think they're saying it as much anymore with um, high resolution, but at the frequencies we play in, it's absolutely a massive improvement to, to do everything you do in the digital domain. It, it also allows, uh, so the crossover is not, in any way analog. The, 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 the low pass crossover that the subwoofer employs is completely in the digital domain, completely and continuously adjustable in the digital domain. And you're right, there's, there's parametric EQ, but there's also other things you can do. There's, you can adjust slope, you can, you can continuously adjust um, phase and polarity. Um, there's a lot of, of, of benefits to it. But I think for the average person, you, you hit it on the nose, the average person probably won't get involved in all those different things. But what the um, processor, the really primary benefit of that processor is that uh, our engineers can, can craft it at a very granular level to make the subwoofer the best it can be. A subwoofer exists in physical space and creates physical experiences. You're right. Um, but in the digital domain, we can craft those physical experiences to be the absolute optimum that they can be given the, the physical components that we have. So, I mean, once again, this is completely playing devil's advocate approach, coming at it from sort of the, the bottom side up, but we want to ask the question and, and be able to have it addressed because, um, again, there's it's almost like a, a relatively new school of thought. Uh, and I mean, the, the phrase that always comes to mind for me is fix it in post. You know, it's the idea of, of could you actually cheap out on the driver and then fix it? with DSP, uh, because we've, we've sort of seen that school of thought emerge in some products. I mean, you've talked about taking the time to develop the driver. Obviously, we're assuming that isn't the approach that SVS took of, oh yeah, let's just put a cheap driver in there and then we'll fix it with DSP. Uh, but I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that and, and uh, you know, like basically why, why use the DSP to enhance what was already designed mechanically uh, even further? Well, the DSP, we're not enhancing anything, just to be clear. We are, uh, uh, but I, I do want to, I think that's a great comment. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll come to it in terms of the specific ex things we look for, but we're not taking a, something that is in some way inferior and making it okay mm. by using digital tricks. What we're doing is optimizing what's already a great product and and optimizing it so that it it creates it delivers on all of its promise to the end user to the listener. Um, but let's talk about what what you can and can't fix um, with DSP. You can somewhat a little bit fix frequency response problems with DSP, but you can't one hundred percent fix it. You can 
somewhat enhance some frequencies at the expense of others uh, in the digital domain, for sure. What you can't do in any way, shape, or form is increase low frequency extension. You can't increase output. You can't increase transient response. None of those things can be touched with uh, a DSP. Those have to occur, you know, speed and transients, massive output, low frequency extension. Those things need to occur by the physical device itself. Um, they, you can't be fixed. It can't be created out of thin air with, with digital magic. For that reason, you need to have a very capable driver and very capable you know, physical amplifier to, to deliver on the potential of that driver. You want to take the next one, Tom? Oh, sure. Uh, I thought, okay. I thought you, the next one was yours. Right. It would have so been. We, we, <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I was confused. So uh, we know that SVS's products tend to have a pretty long development times, even pre-COVID. And you build and you listen a, it's embarrassing. a lot. Well, they, I mean, it's embarrassing. I mean, we take forever to, to launch new products and we, and we stay with products for a long time too. But it does give our customers sort of a peace of mind, I guess, that you know, they're, they're not going to have something they regret in months or a year um, right. Yeah. And uh, we, we sometimes see a school of thought out there, almost the polar opposite of the stereotypical audiophile cliches, where the design, uh, where we can design and analyze predictive performance in software and objectively measure once the prototype is built. So you've already talked about this, about doing this. So why do you bother at, with so many listening tests and listening for so long for the, those that subjective tuning when you can just let the cold hard numbers you know decide what the final result will be why don't you just put a microphone up to it and say it measures flat that's what we're going for we're done wipe our hands because <laughs> that's not what audio products do uh, i mean for the um, we and we obsess over sound you know we sit that's the worst thing about COVID right now is that we can't sit in this and, it, and it's, it's, we're I'm so happy that we're starting to get past this thing and be able to get vaccinated. And uh, I was, unfortunately, <laughs> I was stricken with COVID uh, oh, a goodness. month and a half ago. So, oh, <laughs> so no. for me, I'm kind of, I hopefully am post COVID. Well, we're but, very uh, glad um, that you're, you're able to yeah, join us today. And you appear to <laughs> I wouldn't be have doing brought all it up right. If I, if I, <laughs> I wouldn't have brought it up if I weren't a hundred percent, I'm totally fine. But, but yeah. uh um, we're so excited to be in the same space together, collaborating, listening, talking about what we heard. It's, it's very, um, tedious, exacting work. And, and I, you know, there, there's a cliche in the audio world that there's no measuring device more accurate than the human ear. And I, I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> um, but it, it's certainly the way we cre create our products. We do it every, every kind of product and what we're doing now, and it does delay in COVID some product development is we're just mailing things to each other and then listening to them and then talking about what we heard. It's just extends the time. Um, I'm doing it right now. I just got a prototype of something uh, that I can't talk about. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we had an, guess what your next question is. <laughs> well, you know, we, we had an expectation about this, this product. Um, exactly what you said. It measured blah, blah, blah. I don't want to spill the beans too Fine. much, but, but guess what? I'm like, this is not what we, what we, what I expected. And this is not what we said. And, and, but it all had to take place. It like showed up at my house. I spend a weekend listening to it. And then like Sunday night, I call uh, Smith and I'm like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And he's like, Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, kind of like that. He didn't say, Oh boy, but I think this is a fantasy <laughs> show. Um, <laughs> and I mean, to be clear, uh, it's not like SVS's development is uh, subjective only, far from it. You oh, no, definitely no, no. do believe in taking the measurements, and it's the combination of. of looking at what those measurements and like like you've talked about with with smith designing things when you're talking about the when it came to the 1000 pro series and looking at some little you know 31.5 hertz response that he's like this isn't quite exactly what the target was meant to be i mean that that likely wasn't from a listening test that was likely from a measurement <laughs> test and seeing that That's on a, a graph i'm glad you right? said it. I mean, I, listen, one of the things I always say about SVS that, you know, I've been in our, in this space for quite a long time now. And, and, uh, um, I always say that audio world seems to be divided into two camps. Yep. You've got the, <laughs> We're the um, <laughs> what, right. You've got the, the, um, you know, the big company with the massive engineering infrastructure and the ability to measure and do things with rigor. And, um, but then they, they've, they've leached all the passion and fun out of the space. So they, they kind of attain a, a minimum level of performance for the price, but the products don't engage you. They don't make, mm -hmm. they don't inspire you. Um, 
And then you have this other camp, which is the sort of more boutique companies where, you know, one of our guys made a joke. It's like two guys in a garage. They take a sip of beer. They solder a crossover. <laughs> they listen. You know, there's no rigor. There's passion, but there's no rigor. Right. And um, we have tried really hard to combine rigor with passion for great sound and great experiences for our, our customers, our users. Um, so we do extensive uh, um, pre-prototype uh, design. Then we measure prototypes uh, in uh, anechoic or, or ground plane if it's a subwoofer, meaning outdoors, essentially, um, or an anechoic uh, chamber if it's a, a, a full-range speaker. Um, and then we do in-room measurements uh, uh, where we, we measure how the in-room response is, and then we do extensive listening. And we make adjustments to the product based on all of those. Um, so it's very iterative because first you get it in theory, in a theoretical space, whether a ground plane or a, or a anechoic chamber to get to a certain place you get, then you do the room response. And if the room response isn't what you thought, you got to, you got to make adjustments and then go back to the anechoic chamber. And then you start to listen, you make adjustments based on that, but then you have to measure what you did, mm -hmm. you know, in order not to have it be uh, uh, inaccurate. So it's very iterative. It's tedious. It's time consuming. <laughs> That's one reason why SVS takes a long time, but I, I believe the end result is very, very positive. Obviously, I don't want to sound too, um, you know, <laughs> you mean the, the CEO of the company doesn't want to sound too positive on his own company. I think it's okay. I think we'll, I think the people will give you guys a pass. <laughs> <for that. laughs> well, let's bring it all together because we now we've sort of broken down the components, but we can talk about the measurements that are posted right on the website, which is, which is just a frequency response graph. It's not a gigantic, uh, huge spinorama, you know, every polar response type of thing, but looking at that frequency response graph and just looking at what is the stated minus three dB point, which is something that we look at all the time with subwoofers, we can see the obvious, right? The the outgoing SB1000, I, it was the only subwoofer in the entire SVS lineup at the time where that minus three dB point was not at 20 hertz or lower. It was ever so slightly above, I think it was 23. But now we see, we got this SB1000 Pro, that minus three dB point is right down at 20 hertz. Uh, and then we also look at the PB1000 Pro's uh, graphs that are posted on your website, and we're seeing like, oh, when you put it in sealed mode, it it actually has what we would typically see from a sealed design. It, it, that roll off is pretty gradual, but it maybe starts up around 35, 40 hertz. Uh, but we spotted that in the SB1000 Pro. It looks like that line is kept pretty darn linear, maybe a bit lower than we would expect from a sealed design. So we're thinking, you know, that's all being put together. It's part of the amplifier tuning, part of that DSP tuning. But brass tacks, what are people getting with the 1000 Pro series over the outgoing 1000 series. I mean, that's a, I'd love to give you just a short answer. I, I think it, because these products excel in every case, over, they're better in every way mm -hmm. over the, the 1000 series. Um, and I, I, everybody always says that. Um, so I, I, I hesitate to do it. In fact, my, I said this uh, on our show and my pet peeve in our industry is, you know, new products every year and they're just reskin versions of the old products. So you feel bad about the thing you bought last <laughs> year and, and there's not an appreciable difference. We worked really hard for the difference to be appreciable. I, um, so it's fairly obvious, at least you just looking at the back of the, the, the subwoofer, you can see the difference between the outgoing and the in, and incoming. So there's a lot right there. They're completely different. You're, you, you nailed me on the one thing that didn't change much on the SB, which is the cabinet didn't change much. <laughs> Um, but obviously, it did change on the PB1000 Pro, mm -hmm. and then every other component is a complete redesign. Um, but, you know, I mean, the things that they do better, it, it's pretty simple. They, they, uh, they go deeper. They play louder. Um, they, uh, the frequency response is more accurate because of the ability to granular, granularly craft the um, DSP. And then um, the transient response is outstanding because the driver is uh, uh, an improvement, although I would say more of an evolutionary improvement over the 1000 series driver. And then the final thing that we always say about subwoofers, they need to seamlessly blend uh, with the full range speakers so that we're creating a convincing experience and not, a, you know, a, a subwoofer and speakers is, um, uh, again, the DSP allows us to really seamlessly blend with the full range speakers and make whatever adjustments, which is one of the things our, our you know, we have a team of, as you guys know, team of people that that can help customers get that right with their speakers All right so say someone bought the thousand series sub not that long ago uh maybe for christmas right and they see the new features and performance and how 
aside from the cabinet, everything is better with these new Pro uh, 1000 series speakers or subwoofers. What does uh, FSPS offer in your consumer bill of rights? So our, our Christmas would be no problem. Um, we would just swap it. That would be uh, if they, that would be their their choice. Obviously, the 1000 Pro, the PB, mm-hmm. is a hundred dollars more. So they would they would pay that hundred dollars, but we would pay the shipping both ways. Um, the within a year, we'll do the upgrade, but then the customer pays the shipping. Okay. Um, so so it's and then I just agreed to take back an eight year old um, <laughs> subwoofer, not a 1000 series. It's an, an NSD. Uh, eight year old one, uh, we're not giving the person, you know, the full amount that they paid, Mm -hmm. but we, we, I guess my point here is we don't leave anyone behind. We really don't. I mean, you can see that, um, in comment, you, you're obviously, I'm going to say something like that. Although I, I, we've oriented our company to be that way and take care of our customers, I'm literally going back and forth with a, with someone in Western Canada, another person in Malaysia, and of course, people all over the U.S. who have special circumstances and they want to upgrade and we, we're going to help them. We figure it out and we're going to help them. We take care of everybody. Yeah, well, I wanted to highlight that because, you know, I mean, a lot of people are buying your subwoofers Internet Direct, right? They, they add to cart, go through the checkout process, and, right. and they've never actually like spoken in person uh, on the phone or even via email. And it, it, that's it's not true. typical, right? It's not typical to say, okay, a subwoofer that I bought, you know, close to a year ago, uh, I might have to pay some shipping, but I can get the new version, uh, you know, for very little additional money. Normally, you just have to buy the new thing outright. And I, you know, that's the sort of expectation some people have. And I'm like, just give them a call. Give SVS a call because it's not necessarily going to be the typical and perhaps negative experience that you might be expecting. It's going to be the opposite of that. So wanted to highlight that for people because thank you. Yes, it's uh, it's imp- you can it's see important. it. All. I don't even. I feel I feel embarrassed <laughs> to say it because so. But you can see it all over comments on forums or yeah yeah social media that, that we do it all the time and people really like that. And what you know one of the things I've told our team and I really believe this after you know doing this for a really really long time is. 99% of humanity that you interact with, they're reasonable. And they, they, you know, you, if you take care of them, they, they, they are, their demands are always within reach of a, of a company that cares about their customers. And so we just take care of them. You know, and yeah. for the 1% that sometimes isn't that reasonable, big deal. You can take care <laughs> of them too. You know? So speaking of the upgrades, and we can tie this to the 1000 Pro Series as well, but I wanted to specifically mention, because it's it's right there on the website, it is a thing you can add to your cart and just purchase, which was if you happen to have one of the 13 Ultra Series, which in the lineup yeah. got replaced by the 4000 Series, uh, you offer an amplifier upgrade kit, which is literally you order uh, what is a current 4000 Series amplifier. Uh, it shows up in a nice uh, hefty cardboard box and you can unscrew your 13 ultra amplifier take it out put in the 4000 series amplifier and i mean that's it it is an amplifier swap so i've gone through that myself just to say it's optimized there's we right. have we do have a firmware optimization to that driver okay. which is a different driver than the 4000 yes. series driver so you wouldn't it, it, you're not just getting the 4000 series and it's why we, we took us six months after we launched 4000 series to offer this because we were still developing the the um, profile that that amplifier would have for the 13 ultra driver wow. just to be clear mm. and i mean that um, that hints at i mean the obvious question i mean we we know you've been asked this because we saw it asked blatantly right on facebook which was uh, as soon as that 13 ultra to 4000 amplifier upgrade kit became available like where's the 2000 series because you've you've said right. yourself 2000 series overall has been your most popular series of subwoofers and people who are like i've got yep. a 2000 series how can i upgrade it to 2000 pro and honestly uh can that be applicable to the 1000 to 1000 pro series because i'm i'm looking at that and that's an even bigger difference where you know the diameter particularly in the pb the diameter of that driver changed it's it's a substantially different design there i'm like yep. how do you take a what a pb 1000 and turn it into a pb 1000 pro but uh yeah all of that together a- any other amplifier kits coming <laughs> i mean uh 16 ultra exists unto itself mm-hmm. so they didn't really replace anything 4000 series essentially replaced 13 ultra with a very similar driver and similar cabinet configuration so that was not as hard to do now when you get into the range of 1000 pro and 2000 pro there's a couple of problems with mm-hmm. it and one is the amp- the physical amplifier 
making it fit would have meant compromising the platform. Um, uh, and you, you, so we would have had to make a special one mm. just for that. And um, the, the math, frankly, wouldn't work for the customer mm. at that point. And there's so um, instead, we just want to be really liberal with our uh, upgrade policy and take care of people that way. And then um, offer whatever, you know, offer really hot deals in the outlet on what got <laughs> sent back to us as long as it's in good shape. Um, I, it just the logistics involved w at those prices. It just didn't make sense. We definitely looked at it, um, but no, it's not coming. It won't happen okay. for the simple reason that it, 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 the, the math can't work for the for the customer. Okay, they're much right. better off just doing an upgrade with us. Well, I had one. And by the way, so no, to go I, ahead. No, I, <laughs> No, I think I'll leave that. Okay. I think that that's probably <laughs> I, I had one last subwoofer overall, the entire lineup sort of question, because uh, one thing that popped out to me, we're looking at like CEA 2010 measurements, which is, a, you know, a fairly at least standardized, you can sort of get something a little bit closer to an apples to apples comparison. And that's been around long enough that we were like, if you look at the 2000 Pro series and you look at just raw maximum output and extension type of numbers there that it actually equals now we're going back not to the 4000 series not to the 13 ultra but to the 12 ultra that preceded the 13 ultra it's like that at one point was an svs flagship was the 12 ultra series mm -hmm. and if you just look at the raw numbers the current 2000 pro series is really really close to what that 12 ultra was back when it was the flagship and so i'm just looking at the lineup now and being like what is the obvious separation? And, and uh, in particular, the 3000 series, which I always always feel is like the forgotten middle child, where it's like people are like, yeah, I can get the 2000 Pro series, or if I'm going to pay more, I'm going to go to the 4000 or even the 16 Ultra. And it's almost like, it feels like people skip over the 3000. So uh, I'm interested in where those uh, sort of delineations happen now from series to series. Well, we just try to do the best we can with each new product <laughs> launch. I mean, that's really the truth. I mean, you funny you mentioned 3000 series because 3000 series, this was another one. And this was a conversation between me and Smith and Smith calls me up and he's like, dude, are you sure you want to do this? Because 3000 series is so darn close to 4000 mm -hmm. series. It's just... That 13-inch driver, we came up with some ways to, to um, modify what we were doing with the, with the uh, 4000 series driver um, and be able to bring something um, at the price range of the 3000 series that, that I don't think anyone had ever done before. And, um, and then bringing the amplifier platform down to that price range. It's, it's so darn close to the 4000 series. <laughs> and that's fine. That's totally fine. That is what we do. That's how we roll. We always try to challenge ourselves. And when the next 4000 series, you know, when we replace it, I promise you, it'll have a reason to exist. You know, and by the way, there's nothing in the works. So <laughs> I need to well, be I mean, very clear on that. I, I'm looking at your, your subwoofer line right now. I know you said already said that you're working on new products that you won't tell us about. But, you know, I'm looking at your subwoofer line. Everything's gotten a refresh pretty much. I'll give last... you a hint. We don't only make subwoofers. Mm -hmm. That is true. I'll yes. leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the Go ahead. I'm sorry, I but uh, yeah, the entire line's gotten uh, a re a refresh. You know, like you said, you don't just make subwoofers. So you know, SVS has got their their ultra line, their prime line of uh, speakers. For a while there, there was talk of that of a middle line that was going to go between those two. Uh, is that still dead, or is there some talk of reviving that? I don't know if there's enough space between the two uh, for that. Um, I think Prime Pinnacle mm. kind of did that. And we launched Prime Pinnacle last year, and it won uh, so many awards. It's it's by far the most uh, speaker that received the most accolades of any of our speakers. Um, it, it won the ISO award, which I think you guys are familiar with, but maybe some of the listeners aren't, which is uh, more than 60 audiophile magazines around the world voting, and they voted us the best speaker, <laughs> um, which is pretty, you know, pretty outrageous for a company that, you know, seven years ago, we weren't really even... You know, we th there were some speaker lines that I inherited, but but not what we designed from the ground up. Right. Um, and to have to be named the best speaker in the world in in uh, 2019 is pretty. Uh, I'm just so proud of that. You know. Yeah. 
Well, we have uh, we have touched upon it. We're coming up to the end of our time, so I uh, want to make sure we leave a. Uh, I have a little. I don't. I don't want you guys to feel like it has. No, to no, no, no. It's that's, fine. That's, that's fine. That's quite that's all fine. right. Uh, we we we've touched upon it a bit. I mean, twenty twenty. Uh, a year unlike any other in any of our lifetimes, and uh, the the challenges that some people have gone through has been uh, well, it, 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 things you can't recover from. But uh, but just keeping it on the on the business side, if we don't want to get too personal with anything, I mean, being a business, a global business like SVS is now partners all around the world. Uh, there must have been a tremendous number of challenges uh, dealing with COVID, a global pandemic. We we'd love to hear if there's any tales that you're you're you know, feel comfortable and, and willing to share with us just things that SVS had to face uh, in the, it's still, still ongoing, but hopefully seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Well, um, we set three priorities for ourselves uh, in mid-March when we, sh when we uh, went into lockdown. Uh, uh, I, I shut down all travel. Um, so there's no travel, no commuting other than specific supply chain people that, that ship product. Um, we said to ourselves, we have three priorities and they are in this exact order. Number one, the health and safety of all of our team members and their families. Number two, secondary to that health and safety one is that SBS emerges from this pandemic stronger than we were when we went into it. And then priority number three is if we can do one and two, then let's try to make hay while the sun shines and do the best we can during the pandemic. And that's what we did. And what I think uh, happened during the pandemic, despite all, there was a lot of suffering and I, I don't minimize that at all. Um, and we had, as I said, we, you know, we had our, my whole family got it. We're all fine. I get to say it now because we're all fine. Um, but um, I, what happened in the world, in the marketplace is that a lot of processes and, and trends that were happening slowly up until the pandemic all of a sudden accelerated mm -hmm. exponentially. And things like um, virtual community engagement, which we already were pretty good at, we had to get better at, but we had a big head start on a lot of other people in our space. Um, being customer facing and taking care of people, you know, there I won't name names, but you can go on the websites of a lot of audio brands. And one of my things when I, when I talk to, uh, um, business, uh, fellow business people, I'm like, go on that brand's website and tell me how you get in touch with them, <laughs> how you actually talk to somebody over there. Right. Well, we have a harder than you think. <laughs> we have a whole team of people and their whole, uh, job, their whole purpose in professional life is to engage people and make them happy. And so we already had that in place. Most of them were already working from, from home with, um, mm. you know, we, a, a solution that, you know, allows them to work work from home using their home internet, their computers and all that. Um, so we didn't have to miss a beat with that. Mm. And guess what? When people are locked up at home, they start focusing on stuff that's there. <laughs> we have often and said so, there we has have, never been a better time to really have a great home theater. But if you're home and you're not working, then yeah, you might yes. just call us up and not be interested in, in buying anything, but just help, let us help you optimize your setup, which we did mm. gladly. We were happy to do that. Um, but I do think it, it allowed us to, you know, further connect with what I call the SBS community. Obviously, um, when it's a virtual marketplace, you also have, I have to put this, and this is going to sound very CEO-like, but you also have massive marketplace transparency, meaning people can figure it out. They can mm. figure out what's a great product for uh, the price and what's not such a great product. They can look at user reviews. They can look at press reviews. They can look at all kinds of virtual information that help them to understand which are the great products and which aren't. And um, it's not the same thing as, as walking into a, a store and having someone just recommend something to you. It's a, it's a lot more transparency. And I think it validates those companies that really try to bring um, a real product excellence and value proposition to their community, um, which that's in our DNA to do that. So I think it, it's, it served us well during COVID. Well, Gary, we're at the end of our time here. And it's, as always, it's fantastic to talk to you. Uh, I, you know, I'm really happy to hear that you came through the other side of uh, you and your family getting COVID because, you know, not you know, the, it, no matter how careful you are, it's an extremely uh, virulent thing and uh, you know, anybody can get it. So um, it was a haircut. 
One of my sons got a haircut. Yep. That's what did it. Yep. Oh there my you god! Go. Yeah, See, you know, that's and, not a worry in my case. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, you know, I can. <laughs> if you're not watching the YouTube video, this is not as funny for you as it is for us. But yes, um, I'm very glad that, and, and I'm glad that SBS has come out. Uh, it's, it's been doing so well throughout this as, as well. I think you're right. Uh, you had a head start in that you were already online. You were already doing a lot of things virtually. But the number one thing that uh, SBS has always done, and one of the reasons why we continue to recommend your product, yes, you hit a price point that a lot of our listeners are interested in, but it's a lot easier to recommend your products when we know that if something goes wrong, they're not going to come back at us and say, hey, you know, I bought this subwoofer that you recommended. It, it was broken in shipping, and I called the company, and they told me I'm out of luck. Now, we know that's not going to happen with you guys or something similar. So, uh, you know, your customer service is one of the main reasons why uh, people love you and why we recommend you. Can I just say one thing about you guys, um, which I, I think I said in the last one, but I really want to say it again because it deserves you guys deserve a lot of recognition for how you do what you do. You guys have created so much excitement and positive energy around our space. You do it in a way that is broad based so that everyone can feel like they're, they're a part of this really fun, awesome. I mean, I hate to call it a hobby, avocation, whatever you want to call it. We, <laughs> this thing that we all love, you guys really generate a lot of positive energy and excitement around it. And I'm very thankful for you, irrespective of your, I really am thankful for the support of SBS, but I'm just as thankful for your kind of driving excitement and positive energy in the audio space. That's so Thank nice you. of you to say. Thank you so much, Gary. We can't express enough how uh, how much we appreciate you taking the time we know how insanely busy you are right now but it, as you said it's a good thing because you're busy uh because of success and because of exciting products like the 1000 pro series that's uh yeah just uh it, it's going to be a huge success we can tell without any questions so thank you so and, much for being here today <laughs> and another product launch two weeks from tomorrow oh my goodness Ooh. yes <laughs> you said you can't tell us what, what it is but there's Wait, a tease was, we only have we only that, have a minute left in the podcast <laughs> Two weeks from tomorrow, we'll be able to we'll, we'll talk. Oh, good. All, All right. right. Well, thank guys. you very much, Gary. This Thanks a lot. This has been fun. Thanks for having me. And that was our interview with Gary Kubian. We're, you know, we, he had a very compressed time window, and we spent at least the first seven minutes of it. <laughs> getting the technology set this up so we lost a little bit of yes. <laughs> Skype, OBS, uh, Audacity. But somehow we got through we got through like 14 to 16 to 18 questions if you if you have depending on how you counted them. So uh yeah, it was great. So Rob, I mean, what did you think, Rob? Well, I always wonderful to talk to Gary. I I did not know that uh, he and his family had uh, contracted COVID, so that was sad news, but happy news that they have all made it through uh, and and seemingly recovered just fine. Uh, happy right. to hear the news about SVS, the company itself, because these have been exceedingly challenging times for a lot of companies. And when you are not only trying to maintain an online business, but attempting to expand it globally, uh, yeah, being able to hear that those challenges are faced and, and largely overcome uh, wonderful news on that front. Uh, but yes, the product itself, I think we got a lot of great information on that 1000 Pro I, series. Yeah, I think the big takeaway from this is if you're thinking, uh, you know, that the the new, it, it's just a, a slight refresh, mm. that's not the case as we, you know, and, and we kind of knew that by looking at the amp. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and the fact that the PB 1000 Pro is so much different than the, 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 <laughs> the 1000, the PB 1000 is I mean, it, it, it's it, it's nice to know that every single aspect of this speaker has been these two speakers have been reworked, uh, except for of course for the cabinet for the SP thousand Pro, but everything else. <laughs> I don't has know what you reworked. do with a thirteen and a half inch sealed cube that's going to be you tremendously could. different from iteration to yeah. iteration. <laughs> I, I put some meta material in there oh, someplace, yeah. just shove it in the corner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a very interesting uh, you know product line uh you know it's clear to me that you know they are going to have to branch out into other stuff because right now there there is no real reason for them to start refreshing anything else in the subwoofer line in my mm -hmm. in, to my to my mind i mean there's um, always somebody out there who wants even bigger and louder and lower but uh yeah yeah beyond 16 ultra who knows 
Is it going to become a 5500 right. series? You know, that would fit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I didn't want to say it when he was on the podcast, but uh, when he was on the interview, at least. But uh, yeah, the, the it's going to be like the 1500 Pro, the 2500 Pro. You know, that's going to be the next iteration. I definitely but... don't think the product he teased uh, announcement in two weeks is going to be something replacing the 16 Ultras. That That is, no. don't... Don't look towards that. If I well, let's make a guess, what do we think? Uh, it's let's do. Yeah, it. I I don't think it's going to be new speakers like like regular passive speakers. I think no. I, I I would have to think it's something in the wireless lineup because that is where they've been expanding. They they've had a I, pair of wireless speakers, wireless amplifier. What could it be? I I think yeah, some sort of standalone like wireless Bluetooth SVS mm. speaker. Is uh, it gonna, that would be is going to be a pair of headphones, Tom? Are they, is it going to be SVS headphones? If they're SVS headphones and they don't send me some SVS headphones, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not doing the podcast anymore. I'm just quitting. That's it. Oh, yeah. It, it could be headphones. I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I really kind of feel like it's going to be more of a speaker. Um, well, I mean, he, he pretty know. much said flat out it's not going to be subwoofer. So <laughs> Yeah, well, yes. We know it's not subwoofer, but I think it's going to be some sort of speaker. And, and yes, he, they've, already, they've been doing a lot in the wireless yeah. domain. Yeah. So. I could see that happening. And um, as much as I've been hoping that they might bring out something in the in-wall domain, he shot that down last time. We didn't talk about it in the interview, but he's, uh, that doesn't seem to be where SVS is, is pointed toward whatsoever. So, yeah. That... Well, no, and, and we've seen their, um, you know, their, uh, you know, the the elevation speakers, I think, are about as far into the Atmos range that they're going right. to get. Um well, that could be that. Well, he said it wasn't a subwoofer, <laughs> but it could be like an Atmos module that they put uh, on top of their speakers. That that could be it because mm. their their line of uh, elevation speakers can't uh, can't be placed that way because of where the the speaker terminals are and mm. stuff like that. So uh, maybe a uh, elevation pro, <laughs> elevation pro, which will allow it to be either on the wall, on the ceiling, or on top of one of their speakers to, for upwards firing Atmos module. Could mm. be. I could see that. Well, we shall find out in a couple of weeks. It will obviously be announced online. And for uh, the people watching us in the future on YouTube, they're going to be saying, well, why didn't you talk about the thing they already announced it? So, you know, that's that's how it goes. Dates don't exist. And that's why and that's why we turned your comments <laughs> off, because you people are awful. <laughs> All right, to get your question answered on this podcast, and we do answer all of the questions that's right. that are sent to us. First in, first uh, out. Send them on into our email. <laughs> send it to question at avrant.com. For AV Rant, I'm Tom Andre. And I'm Rob H. Now stay in and listen to something. Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.